What's up, home theater enthusiasts? Today we're going to be taking a look on how to choose the best crossover points for your speakers in your home theater. Now, typically, I used to just go to the manufacturer website, look at the frequency response of the speaker, and then just kind of, you know, put the crossover 10 hertz above that. But at that point, we are kind of at the mercy of the manufacturer and like, well, is this correct? Can we still hear a little bit higher, lower? Where should we actually put it? Well, we created the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit, and there's a section in here called Crossover Points to help everyone out with this whole situation. So basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna play tones through each speaker and it's gonna go from 250 hertz down to 16 and back on up. You will be able to hear, hey, my speaker supposed to go down to 80, but it actually sounds better at 100. And there you go. So let's go upstairs and check out what's going on with my speakers and the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. Don't forget, the disc has started shipping, so make sure you get yours today and transform your home theater experience forever. Let's do this. Oh yeah, almost forgot. The LFE file in the crossover point section on the SACT is nuts. Like if you wanna shake your whole house, you can do it with that file, but you know, we are not responsible for any damage to your hearing, your home theater speakers, your subwoofer, or your home in general, okay? Like it was shaking the crap out of my bathroom shower doors, like three rooms away. So that part is toward the end of the video. And for those of you that have been looking to really test out your subwoofers, can they really go down to 16 Hertz? This is the section for you. Hey. Enough lollygagging, let's get upstairs and do this. Back with more manual calibration using the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. Right now we're going to check out crossover points for my speakers. And before we jump into that, I'm going to uh, first turn the volume down because we don't need it to be that loud. And then we need to jump in and turn off a few things. So what we need to do in speaker layout, this is the new menu system if you haven't seen my video on the new menus for the Denon X3800 and up, uh, definitely check it out. I'll put a link in description. We wanna tell the AVR that we do not have any subwoofers, okay? And then on the crossover, we need to make sure this says full range. Oh, look at that. It's already set to full range when you turn off the subwoofer. Boom, full range, full range, full range, full range and full range. I won't be doing the tops around, but you know, just for good measure. In reality, we only need to do the front left. Since the front right is the same, it's not gonna make a difference. So we're gonna do front left, center, then one of the surround speakers, cause both surrounds are the same, and then only one of the height channels. So basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna hit play on front left, and it's gonna play tones from 250 hertz all the way down to 16 and all the way back up. So I'm just gonna listen to where I don't hear the tone anymore or to where the tone is still audible and it still has a little bit of volume and you know punch and all that kind of stuff. So here we go. All right, I don't hear it anymore. I barely heard it at 40. I think 50 is going to be where I wanna set it at because that's where it had a good amount of like heft to it. Let's hear it again, it's coming up. Yeah, 50. Now, unfortunately with the Denons, it won't go down to 50 or I can't set 50. I'll have to set uh, either 80, 60 or 40. So I'm gonna set it at 60. All right, let's move on to the next speaker. I'm gonna press top menu here on the Blu-ray player. This is the spatial audio calibration disc, the actual physical disc. We're so excited to get this out to everybody. All right, so basically we're at the same situation. I could probably pick 50 or 60, but since, yeah, since the Denon can't really go to 50, I'm gonna pick 60 for the crossover for the center as well. We've got 60 and 60. All right, we're gonna now move over to the left surround speaker. So all I gotta do is just navigate to, oh, no, surround. Oh, let's go surround right. Sure, whatever. Oh yeah, I didn't, I barely heard anything at 50 or 40. The driver's a little bit smaller, so definitely 60. I might actually keep these at 80. So let me hear it back on the way up. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with 80 for these. So 60 for the front, 80 for the surrounds. Now, these speakers will all kind of perform around the same. They're all like small bookshelf speakers. But if you have like towers in the front, smaller center channel, different brand surrounds, different brand height channels, then this is definitely the way I would go about it using the spatial audio and calibration toolkit. All right, so now we need to go to front height. So let's do front height left. I still heard something at 53, but I think 80 is probably where I'm going to keep it. Yeah, 80 is good. Let me jump back into the crossover section here on the Denon X3800H. Manual setup, crossovers, and we're going to go... We didn't do the tops round, but, you know, it's going to be the same rear height. 80, 80 front height, 80 surround. We're gonna go 80 on the surround, center 60. And then we need to go back out of here and turn on the subwoofer and speaker layout. Changes from full range to 60. All right, so here are my crossovers and you guys pretty much watched how I figured that out. I could go down to 60 on the surround, um, could go up to 100 on the height channel. So, so maybe I'll play around with these. I'm not 100% sure. But if you guys want some fun, we got to play the LFE channel. Whew. If you want to shake the crap out of your house, wake up the dogs, wake up the neighbors, wake up everybody, scare the crap out of your wife. The LFE section here is nuts. And if you have some big subs or you know, some low digging subs, we can check them out right here. Now, disclaimer, we are not responsible for any broken glass. We're not responsible for you messing up your home theater. We're not responsible for you breaking your subs. So uh, let me turn this down just a little bit and play this LFE. Let's see how much of this house you're going to hear shake, all right? Whoa. <laughs> oh yeah, the whole house, the whole house is shaking. I could hear, I'm going to turn this down. I could hear the uh, shower doors in the bathroom shaking from all the way here in the living room. So there you have it. Quick little video on how to use crossover points. Again, the LFE one is just for fun, for you to see how much of your house can shake. You might break something, so please be careful. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.